Welcome to another writing lesson. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really getting into these poems and getting really excited about them. So today's focus is all about sound devices. Sound devices. We're looking at how we can use sound in our poems to really grab our listeners' attention. So, because remember, poetry is all about reading it out loud for people to enjoy. Um, so some of the things that we can use in our poems to really excite people is repetition. You might have heard your mum or dad say, now I've told you, Sam, time and time again, to never eat with your mouth full. Why do your parents say the same word again? I've told them time and time again. Well, when we hear repetition, it sinks into our brain and we hold on to that word. So when they say time twice, time and time again, it shows me that they've said it lots, and I remember that. So in our poetry, we can also use repetition. So if I was going to write a poem right now about playing soccer, I might want to say, the ball flew high, high, high into the air. And then that, again, paints a picture in the person's mind saying it is soaring. We have alliteration. Now, don't forget, it, a lot of people think it's only about the spelling. It is not about the spelling. This is all about the first sound in every word of that sentence. So, having the first sound being the same. So, as an example, I have... Um, Here's, here's, here's an example. There's a famous poet called Edgar Allan Poe, and he wrote a lot of poems in his life, and one of his most famous ones is um, called The Raven. And one of his poems... So, The Raven goes like this. I think the bit especially that's famous is, Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore while i nodded nearly napping suddenly there came a tapping and it's all about like a, a raven knocking at the door um so the alliteration there he used uh weak and weary so what and what two what words um he had nodded napping nodded napping uh, what was the other word i used nearly N nearly nodded napping or whatever the order I used so mm, mm, mm. and then he had an interesting one there I wonder if you picked it up uh, he said um, quaint and curious quaint and curious if I wrote it down for you does it let me write oh it does let me write um, ignore the next one so we have quaint is spelled like this wow that's okay just imagine that's an a <laughs> quaint and we have the word curious and you'll notice quaint is a q u and curious is a a c and then the curious so i'm hearing a urious whereas it's a qu so a qu and a k so i'm only hearing a qu a qu and a k but they are very similar which still counts as alliteration even though the spelling wise they are very different so alliteration great to use in our poetry the next one that you saw a little sample of was assonance so assonance is when we have the same vowel sound repeated so remember vowels a e i o and u and as i said in the previous video the letter Y can sometimes use, it sometimes has the job of a vowel. So when we look at syllables sometimes, um, if we have the word sky, um, the there's no vowel, and there's no A, E, I, O, or a U. So the Y is making it so it's still an English word that we're we, you're allowed to have it spelt like that because of the Y, because it's acting pretending that it's a vowel in that word. Anyway, that's off topic. Assonance. So give me giving you an example. We have um, this poem from a lady named Kelly Roper, and it says, um, Who knows why the cold wind blows 
or where it goes, or what it knows, it only flows in passionate throes, until it finally slows and settles in repose. So, you probably heard it there, it was the O sound. It had a lot of rhyming, correct? But if we ignore the s, s, s at the end of each word there, and we just focus on the O, O, O throughout the poem, the, that sound O oh, is really making our ears perk up and we are focusing in because the next line, if it didn't have an O oh in it, we would all of a sudden feel uncomfortable and go, hmm, why did the writer of that poem, why did the poet not include that? And there'd probably be a good reason for it. We have consonants. So it's very similar to assonance, but instead of it being a vowel sound, uh, it's any kind of sound that is in either the middle or the end of the word and again repeated just like alliteration so i have a good example we have um one by a person called shell silverstein and it's a poem called invitation if you are a dreamer come in if you are a dreamer a wisher a liar a hoper a prayer a magic bean buyer if you're a pretender come sit by my fire so in that one, we had the er uh sound at the end of every word. So again, it made it rhyme, sure, because every word ended with an er, uh, but the sound coming through was that er, uh, and that was really carrying the poem. And last one, you've probably heard this one before, onomatopoeia. So that's when it sounds like the word that it means. So... Um, an example of a poem that could use onomatopoeia because it's easy to make onomatopoeia just a bit childish and make it pretty boring because um, we've all heard poems where it just you know bang crash loud noises a bit boring so using it creatively it could be like the drip drop of the rain it's time to run a big jump splish splash goes the puddle squeal and the child giggles happily so a uh, giggle, it sounds almost like a laughter when you say giggle because the g sound is, is sometimes the sound we make when we giggle. Um, splish and splash, any like ish and ash sounds, it sort of sounds like water splatting around. Um, and I guess because our, especially our s sounds and sh sounds, spit often comes out. So it helps us remind us of splishing and splashing. Um, drip, drop, they're both short words. Um, so because they're so punchy and short, it helps us actually imagine water dripping and dropping. Um, squeal, uh, if you heard a pig squeal, again, you would really, I think that there's qua e, it, it makes you feel uncomfortable. So again, sort of like an uncomfortable pig squeal. So let's see some more examples. I'm going to put, you should pause the video and you should go in and see if you can give it a go. So as an example, we're going to either handwrite it or just think about it. How are you going to do it? Um, we're going to write where we see everything and we're going to color code it. So alliteration being red. I've got a twirling through the sky, turning, tumbling, twisting. So I've got the t -t -t. Uh, down here. We've got um, falling floating, flying. All right, if I change my color, uh, we have assonance. So remember, assonance was the vowel sounds. So um, I've got, gr sorry, that's not a vowel sound. Um, we've got um, s sleep upon the eaves. I've got an E sound. So double E and E A both make the E sound, right? E sound. So to sleep upon the eaves, it's some assonance. The vowel keeps popping up, the E sound. Um, if we look at consonants, well, remember that was any kind of the middle of the word or the ending of the word. So um, a lot of the ings. So I've got turning, tumbling, twisting, yeah, they're all ending in ing. So that will be a little bit easier to find because anything it rhymes. So I've got sky, 
and buy. Well, that's a weird looking Y. All right, and then the final one, onomatopoeia. And again, some of these might combine. And onomatopoeia are rustling. So that sounds like leaves moving, the word rustling. All right, pause the video, have a go, and then I'll show you all the ones I found. Hopefully you've paused it, you've given it a go. Uh, here's the ones I did earlier, and I went through and tried to find it all. You'll see that some of them, I've, I even had three. I had a cut because it was crunching and cracking, so that was some alliteration. I had, r why did I write runch and rack? Oh, right, because it's onomatopoeia, because crunch sounds like you're, you know, something uncomfortable, and crack, again, sounds very uncomfortable, sort of sounds like the word it means. So that's some onomatopoeia. And then they had the ing being the consonant. It is rhyming. It's the end of the word. It sounds the same. So there you go. Maybe maybe there's more that I didn't find. So yeah, let me know if there's any more that I'd missed. Brilliant. Let's very quickly read one more poem and uh, we'll get started.